Tesla is under attack. Patrick here is saying that Tesla's real product is emissions credits. Even more than that, Elon Musk says that he may make a phone if needed. He said, I certainly hope it does not come to that. But yes, if there is no other choice, I will make an alternative phone referring to Apple and Google potentially booting Twitter from their app stores. Would you buy Elon Musk's phone? I certainly would. I would be so happy to try out a phone that Elon Musk would make. Let's check this out. Look, it already has 20,000 likes, 7,000 retweets. And by the time you watch this, it will probably be a lot more. So what is he saying here? Here's the thing about Tesla. It's not a car company. Tesla is a company that has to make cars in order to sell its real product emissions credits. Let me explain. Back in 2012, the EPA put out new Strident emission standards for new vehicles fleet-wide. Car makers here in the US who wanted to either build or sell new cars in US so while needed their fleets of mostly internal combustion engine vehicles to meet these new standards. Most couldn't because their engines weren't nearly efficient enough. Some like Toyota and Honda were in better shape because they didn't sell huge SUVs and trucks as their core product line and were already pushing hard into hybrid vehicles if not pure electrics just yet. Manufacturers who exceeded their fleet-wide emissions targets were given credits which they could either bank or sell on the open market. I don't see any problem here. I mean, the government is telling you you have to pay extra tax if you want to keep polluting our environment. What's the problem with that? You pay a tax here, basically. Manufacturers who didn't meet their emissions targets would need to buy these credits in order to remain compliant with the new EPA standards. Enter Tesla. Ooh, this is where it gets interesting. Being the only largest all-electric auto manufacturer, Tesla's fleet em is emissions-free. Yep, of course. So Tesla doesn't ever need to worry about banking their carbon credits to spend in future years if emission standards become even more strident again. They can take all of the credits they generate and sell 100% of them on the open market to other builders. And guess what? So can anyone else. It's not just Tesla. Everyone can do that. And they do. Yeah, of course. In Q1 of last year, Tesla's entire profit came from selling half a billion dollars of carbon credits to other car makers. Which, hey, good for them. But in reality, it means driving and owning a Tesla hasn't actually reduced global emissions at all. Wow, that's a big statement. We're going to dig into that. Because Tesla is basically selling indulgences to other manufacturers so they can continue building and selling fleets of internal combustion engine vehicles that don't meet standards, delaying the day the rest of the industry commits to investing in decarbonization. I don't see much of a problem. I mean, if Ford, GM, Toyota, Honda, any other car maker wants to keep producing internal combustion engine vehicles and commit suicide, basically? Let them be. What's the problem? They are like dinosaurs hoping that the comet lands on them. Hopefully not that soon, but they see it coming. And yet they are not doing anything. Not much of that is. Stellantis alone has bought more than two and a half billion in carbon credits from Tesla. All those gas guzzling SUVs, trucks, and 800 horsepower muscle cars thank a Tesla buyer. They literally couldn't exist otherwise. You know what? I like more than an 800 horsepower muscle car. 1,020 horsepower in. Model S Plaid. Love it.
although it's completely unnecessary. Totally, absolutely ridiculous. Definitely not necessary. I would rather just buy Tesla stock instead of buying the Plaid Model S. It's nice to have. But even the Model 3 that we drive, you know, I'm a little bit worried already when my wife drives it. I'm like, oh, that car is a little bit fast for you. I don't know. So, hmm, imagine about Model S Plaid. Whoa. So, I guess what Patrick is saying here is if you take this 800 horsepower muscle car, which supposedly made uh, Tesla vehicles possible, the other way you could say that this 800 horsepower muscle car, which is nowhere near as fast as the Tesla Model S Plaid, is making the Model S Plaid possible. The 1,020 horsepower car. Because supposedly uh, Tesla is funded by those credits. So what are you upset about? This is why I say Tesla isn't a car company. That's a big statement. <laughs> when you buy a Tesla, you're not the only or even the primary customer. Actual car companies are. Which would help explain why Teslas are notorious for poor build quality, their fit and finish is abysmal, and there's so little attention or resources paid to service infrastructure when things do go wrong, which is often that GM has been quietly servicing and repairing more than 10,000 Teslas at their own service centers over the last year. Let's talk about Tesla's reliability. There is much to talk about here. Tesla scored a reliability score of 40 out of 100, while electric vehicles overall scored 36 out of 100. This is Consumer Reports. It isn't all bad news for Tesla. Its score matches the average for domestic automakers. The company was able to improve its ranking by four places compared to last year, and none of its vehicles made to the list of 10 least reliable vehicles in America, a list that notably included the popular Hyundai Kona EV scoring 5 out of 100. Now that's bad. So thing number one, you cannot compare reliability, uh, well in a way you could, but you, you it's better, more accurate to compare electric e uh, vehicle reliability to other electric vehicles so you're gonna have a more apples to apples comparison but even then overall there are less things to break another thing about those consumer reports which Stephen mark ryan said that these are con reports this is not me saying that definitely not saying that i'm just saying what Stephen mark ryan said just want to be clear about that but we don't know exactly how is that reliability score calculated? I would like to know. Because for Teslas, obviously, Teslas have been plagued before the initial poor build quality where you get a car with huge gaps, panel gaps and everything, and you have little issues in the beginning when you take delivery of a car, but you can fix those immediately. Uh, Tesla lets you do that in the very beginning. You just inspect the car and then they can fix that for you. Of course, it's not a, a, exactly the best experience if you paid, let's say, $60,000 for a car and then you need to do that. But hey, look, Tesla is growing very fast. That is sort of expected, but it's getting much more better. Uh, the next big issue here, potentially, is uh, software updates. How are those calculated in the reliability score? I mean, other automakers, when they have a recall, it's an actual recall, but for Tesla, they do a software update, and that also counts as a recall. Are you saying that it would be better to old indestructible technology that sucks or would you rather have a phone that's actually useful really in many more ways than just making phone calls but it receives many updates constantly all the time which is kind of annoying when you use a phone but with a car it just sits in a garage and it just updates itself when you are not driving I don't like updates for the 
phones because I'm always using the phone. Even when I am going to sleep, let's say, or while I'm sleeping, sometimes I get a, I wake up in the middle of the night and like, oh, what is my phone doing? Oh, it's updating. Ah, annoying. Also, check this out. This is in China, though, but still. Uh, you can see that all of these automakers, including Volkswagen, see right here, Volkswagen, 80, uh, 18 problems per uh, 10,000 units sold. And I go to the next page, and Tesla is at the very bottom. Bottom here is good. We want to be at the bottom. We want to be the most reliable. So I think over time, uh, Fremont factory, let's face it, it sucks. It was the first factory that Tesla bought from a joint venture from previous automakers that are probably going to go bankrupt, maybe. And it's a whole mess. But let's see how reliable the cars are going to be from the new factories, and then we can talk. But even panel gaps and all that, it's already getting much more better. But that definitely was a problem before, no doubt about that. But it's just a, a part of scaling. And GM serving Tesla's? Yep, Tesla does need to step up his game with service. Uh, we have a friend who took about two months to have her car fixed because there were no parts. So service, Tesla needs to do much better with service, for sure. You, the buyer, simply aren't a priority for Tesla. I strongly disagree with that particular statement. I think Tesla really considers their buyers in a uh, totality. That is, maybe individual things, of course, there will be issues. But generally, I mean, Tesla vehicles, I believe, comparing them to any other electric vehicles, which one is better when you compare for total value? So I would, dis I would strongly disagree with that. So, hey, buy a car that hasn't actually helped the environment and might catch fire. Can't open the rear doors if it does and funds a cut rate bond villain trying to turn Twitter into... Whoa. I don't know if I can say that on YouTube, so I'm not going to say that. But you can read it. Just know what it is you're actually buying. Okay, this one is so easy. You just go to Google and search for Tesla fires versus internal combustion uh, engine vehicle fires. You will see so much data. Um, there's so much information. It's so easy to find. I can't find anything that says EVs catch on fire more often than uh, internal combustion engine vehicles. And this is government data. Show gasoline vehicles are up to 100 times. Uh, wow, this is big. 100 times more prone to fires than EVs. Can't open rear doors if it does. Now, this one, he does have a little bit of a point. Okay, so check this one out. This is exactly not very good. Now, Tesla has improved this a lot, but this is if you are in a Model Y in the back seat and the battery is not working anymore, so you cannot just open the door anymore. In the front, no problem. There's a manual uh, way to open it, but here, I mean, he's using a screwdriver to open this one in the back, <laughs> and he's not able to. From the first, second try, not able to. Third try, still not able to. Fourth try, okay, open. And now I think there's, you have to pull something here. Oh, here you go. And now you would be able to open the door. Okay, that was not good. If you are in, if a car is on fire and you need to get from the back door, I wouldn't try to get from the rear seat, uh, from, from the rear doors. I would climb into the front and I would just get out from the front. That's what I would do. So yeah, Tesla could do a better job and they are doing a better job now the new models, but this resulted in a, a window that was basically knocked out because someone couldn't figure out intuitively in an emergency situation how to open the door, which in, in the front is actually very easy, very simple. Instead of pressing this button, which may not work if the battery is out, you just uh, flip this up and then the door opens. But if, you, it's, if it's your first time in a Tesla, you may not know this, so I think Tesla could do a better job making it super intuitive to understand how it all works. Extra innings. It's entirely possible that 
plan in Elon's mind was to use the emissions credits to get the legacy manufacturers to pay him for their own extinction. I assume he guessed Tesla would ramp up EV production quickly enough to build an insurmountable lead. This is actually a pretty good point when you really think about it. I mean, these manufacturers could have made their own EVs. Why didn't they do that? They literally paid Tesla. Here are here's money for the emissions credits. And they're going they're not doing good. It's kind of a good point, although uh it's missing that they could have made EVs to avoid paying the emissions credits. It's like saying, oh this person is getting a tax advantage because he is doing real estate. Well, yeah, because the government wants good real estate available. Government wants to have housing for people. Just go into real estate if you if you complain about that. What's what's the issue? What's the problem? I don't see any problem. He wanted to corner the EV market and own the future of cars blocking out the dinosaurs, the ultimate disruption, but he couldn't pull it off. What do you mean he couldn't? Tesla is number one by far. Unless you are looking at BYD, which includes hybrids as well in their numbers, which I don't think we can count hybrids as uh, battery electric vehicles is what we want to count. We want to count battery electric vehicles and Tesla is by far number one, especially in the US, there's not even a second close uh, place. But he couldn't pull it off. His early lead never grew large enough due to production delays and constraints. Now battery EVs are coming from everywhere. Okay, so this is very starting to not make much sense. So you were saying before that uh, Elon had this evil master plan to take over the EV industry. And now somehow competition is coming. So which one is it? Does Elon have a monopoly on EVs? Or is competition coming? Which one is it? This is not making that much sense anymore. He had one last advantage to play, which was the Tesla charging network. This advantage remains, but he lobbied hard to get the government to fund a nationwide charging network based on Tesla's proprietary plugs and chargers. Okay, first, Tesla's patents are open to use for everyone else. But even then, Tesla opens up its EV charging connector to the whole world. Uh, Tesla removed all the patents in the lobby of its Palo Alto headquarters, prompting Elon Musk to explain in a blog they have been removed in the spirit of the open source movement for the advancement of electric vehicle technology. So not only are the patents available to everyone to use, Tesla removed the patent for its proprietary charger, which is quite a bit better than everyone else's. Now, legacy manufacturers are drastically ramping up newer, better, cheaper EVs and more types and models than Tesla offers on platforms that aren't already a decade old. Those manufacturers will rely less and less on buying Tesla's credits to remain compliant. Def. Spiral. First, the mission of Tesla is to accelerate the advent of sustainable transport. Literally, the reason why Elon Musk started Tesla is because no one else was making electric vehicles. That was the whole point. So... Elon is celebrating the fact that other automakers are making EVs. This is a good thing. Now, what does Patrick say in response to Tesla's net income only being 9% in the third quarter of 2022 now? He says, listen, weird nerds. I don't care about the third quarter of this year. Really? He doesn't care. What do you mean he doesn't care? He said, Tesla is a company that has to make cars in order to sell its real product. Emissions credits! What do you mean you don't care? You just said it right here. Tesla's real product is emissions credits. He didn't say in the past. He didn't say a long time ago. He said, implying right now, the real product that Tesla is selling is emissions credits. 
He says, I'm talking about the history of a company, its foundations, and how it arrived where it is now, which is a story most people clearly didn't know. And then, of course, right below this, this is going to all make sense. There's a book. If I go to his profile, uh, and if you read who Patrick is, sci-fi author, contributor, and yeah, hey, look. What he's doing is working. People are talking about him. I'm sure he's selling some more books. This is bringing some attention. I'm talking about this. I mean, everyone in the Tesla community is talking about it. So what he's doing is working. You can't argue against that. But when you look at Tesla's revenue and this golden color, this is regul regulatory credit. So while profit, net income, uh, that's a pretty you know large portion of net income, you, it used to be, but when you look at the revenue, it was a very tiny portion. And this chart shows very well how Tesla's income and revenue is broken down into each category. Pause the video if you'd like to see more. And yes, of course, we have to point out the fact that Tesla's net income used to come a lot of it from regulatory credits. I don't see any shame in that. I don't see any problem with that because Toyota, GM, Ford, any other company could have taken advantage of this and they did not. And now we are paying the price for that by losing to Tesla very badly. So when it comes to sci-fi, this was a pretty good read. It was emotional. It had the villain in the story. It had the whole plot and the hook was amazing that Tesla's real product is emissions credits. As a sci-fi post, this was a pretty good one. Tesla is clearly winning and dominating, and these are 48 reasons why I only own Tesla stock in my stock portfolio. My name is Matt Postis. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you right here.